We had like one hour of sun and I was enjoying around Camden and just, you know, taking all my cookies and tea everywhere. It was so, so nice. I loved it. Honestly, the fashion, the people and the tea, the English tea. The English I, tea. Queen Elizabeth. I was just like, hello, cheers. Hi. <laughs> I loved it there, seriously. Everything was so classy and so, you know, beautiful. Beautiful. I had to do the accent as well. In it. <laughs> I love that. She's gone from posh to in it. She was like, it's so beautiful. In it. <laughs> in it. <laughs> oh, I really, really hope you come to London soon. I hope you come to London soon because I need to see you do this, just walking the streets of London. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you very much. You're a lovely person, you are. Very much, bro. Bro. The diamond, you are. Hi, Lynn Dieter. I am Callum Delieto here for Media Spotlight UK, and it is an absolute pleasure to have you joining us all the way from Atlanta. How are you? The pleasure is all mine. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. I, that's very polite of you to say that the pleasure is all yours, but I, I'm not <laughs> sure it is. But thank you anyway. Um, it's it's really exciting to speak to you, actually, because I've been kind of researching you thoroughly, stalking you on social networks and and investigating your career and uh, you're a very impressive individual. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, um, for those that don't know you, though, uh, then shame on them. But also, um, they're about to get to know, which is which is what this is is all about. It, it, very briefly, literally in a minute, how would you describe your career? Or, or if you were to give yourself a one minute biography, what would that be? Uh, it's been a roller coaster. Ups, downs, ups, downs, ups, downs. I've had great moments. I've had really, you know, disappointing moments, but that happens in any industry. And I've learned to embrace the good and the bad that comes with it. So I'm managing, I think. <laughs> You're doing more than managing. You've got a plethora of awards and accolades to your name, um, particularly in Albania, right? Because for, for those that don't know, you're you're Albanian born and, and, and your career has, has kind of been started there. Um, what, what was it like to kind of transition from a Albanian focused career to going across the pond and, and breaking it in, in, in America? It was very humbling because like I came from, you know, everybody knowing my name to nobody knowing who I am. And it was uh, at first, you know, it was very like challenging because I was so used to, not that I was feeling like I'm better than anybody, but when, when you have to explain to everybody all over again that, hey, you guys, I'm not just starting to sing. I'm, I'm, I've am i sang before, but how do you say it in a humble way where you don't sound cocky, you know, where mm -hmm. you don't sound stuck up or diva-like? So that was very challenging for me to when producers are like, oh, so how long you've been singing? I'm like, um, for a few years. They're like, OK, so but we never heard of you. I'm like, well, you know, I'm from Albania and it's, it's you know, I started my career there. So they're like, oh, do you do people know you? So I'm like, how do I tell them that they know me in a humble way? You know, yeah. like, how do, I, how do I not act like, oh, by the way, I'm famous. Like, no. <laughs> How do you how do you not act like a, a diva, but at the same time sell yourself? Which is which is true. That's such a difficult thing. And I think I think the other element of that, right, is you know I know that in anything that anybody does, there's a sense of progress and a sense of of evolution in in whatever your career is. Um, right. As you get better and better and better, and as people recognise you, or as as you get accolades and things like that. And so it must have been hard for you as an individual because it, it sounds like it almost felt like you were starting all over again, even though you were starting again in a much bigger market. Did, how was that as a challenge for, for motivational purposes? Did you feel kind of demotivated at any points because you were like, oh, I'm starting again? Right. There, there, has been so, there have been so many moments where I did feel demotivated and I was like, maybe I'm pushing too hard. Maybe I should just relax and just take another, you know, 
job or do something else. And I mean, I started working as a fitness trainer here since 2014, other than music. So I was doing a lot of studio sessions, but there was a lot of times where I was getting really disappointed from doing the studio sessions, finishing the song, and then finding out that I can't use that song now, or, you know, I didn't have the right management team to make sure that I get the song that I paid for the sessions. And it's been a lot of spending money to not getting any money until I started getting paid for shows and stuff like that here as well. Yeah. And, and, you know, but I mean, it's, it's great that you've got those kind of uh, other areas of expertise there, you know, the fact that you've got the fitness and, and, and also the fact that you you know so many languages. I mean, it's it's one thing to be able to sing in your your native tongue, but you know, is it like five different languages that you speak and can sing in? I I can communicate in about seven, but I sing in ten. Like, let's say for example, French. Like, I can sing fluently in French, but I don't speak the language. Yeah. Wow. Ten. <laughs> ten languages. I can barely speak English, and I struggle with that. <laughs> And Let alone sing. On TV, like I never went to school for no languages. Like I, I never had a class or a course or anything like that. It's just subtitled yeah, but, movies and, you know. Yeah, because you, you sort of self-taught yourself English, right? <laughs> Through kind of American TV and movies. Is that right? That, yes. That's which uh, which movies and, and TV was your, which particularly your education? I am a comedy and horror fanatic, like... I love scary movies, thrillers or, you know, suspense where I have to be in suspense the entire time until I find the truth. I like to guess a lot. And honestly, just looking at the subtitles is what taught me English and music and lyrics and stuff like that. Interesting. (laughs) See what I did there? I created suspense. Did you enjoy that? Did you enjoy enjoy the suspense that I gave you there? Okay. (laughs) Yeah, that was that was me trying to create suspense. I don't know if it worked, but that was me trying to create suspense. And I'm like, okay. I think she probably just thinks I'm frozen. <laughs> now I knew you were not frozen. You were moving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we go. Well, I'll, I'll I'll stick to the experts. I'll let I'll let Hollywood deal with the suspense and the horror, right. and and I'll, I'll just stick to asking questions. Um, I but no, that. I. <laughs> I think it was. I think it's super impressive that you've done that, and um, obviously your next project is going to be your first all English project. Is that right? Yes. Like I even just did a song now that I'm going to shoot the music video. I'm going to Albania to shoot the music video for it. Um, got this great video production that I'm working with, and it has Albanian elements like the surles, the instruments that the traditional instruments that we have, but it's in English. So I'm trying to kind of like incorporate my culture my ethnicity my my traditions to american music as well like kind of mash up you know yeah, so hopefully yeah. hopefully people will like it and play it and stream it you know well i think that that's what makes you 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 right and also it's it's your usp it's it's what separates you from the million other tr- singers trying to to make it not just your talent, which is is obviously outstanding, but it's it's the fact that you have that Albanian heritage and that you're not afraid to kind of embrace it and bring that into your music. I think it's, it's fantastic. No, it's been very challenging at first because I was like, how are people going to understand it here in America? But I feel like even if maybe they don't understand me, they will start to understand other artists that might bring it after me. I, I kind of like to break the mold. Like I kind of like to try new things that whether they work or not, at least I did what I wanted to do, you know, yes. like give ideas out there. Fortune favors the broad. I like that. I like that a lot. But you've, you've gained inspiration, right? You, you gain inspiration, particularly from from some well-known American artists. Oh, yeah. I think you've you've said Mariah Carey was one of them. I love her, like her whistle tones, her crazy notes. And just it's Mariah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Whitney Houston as well, Tina Turner, some of these, I mean, these are powerful voices that you're quoting here. Stevie Wonder, James Brown, a lot of other icons. And what, how do you, because they're quite varied as well. You know, you, you've got, you've got Stevie Wonder, you've got Mariah Carey. I mean, there, there's elements of, of similarity between them, but, but as a whole, they're very different artists. And how do you draw inspiration from all these different flavors to create your own kind of cocktail of, <laughs> Anything that comes from the soul, the soul, the funk, the fun, the ballads, heartfelt, big ballads. And I feel like they, you know, I try to take a little bit of each of them and bring Lindita to the world. (laughs) Love it. 
<laughs> bringing bringing Lindy to the world. That's what we want to see. Ah, uh, you see me. <laughs> Oh well, you, you mentioned there about ballads, right? And, and ballads come from the heart and you're talking about music that comes from the heart. So I'm curious and I want to find out a little bit about your, your, your heart inspiration. You know, what's your, what's your current kind of love life looking like? What, what, what's, what's fueling your songs at the moment when it comes to your heart? I, love, I can just tell you that I love a lot. I, I love life. I love to wake up in the morning and that's where I find all my inspiration, really. Love that. That was there's a good way to avoid the relationship question there. I see what you did. Yeah. Right. How are you doing today? <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. I will let I'll let that slide. Do you know what? You've entertained me enough. I'll let that slide. <laughs> I, love yeah, I love humans. <laughs> and I love myself. Well, you have a lot of fans, to be fair, because um, there was there was a lot of love coming on on sort of the media spotlight UK kind of socials. Um, some of them, I, we asked them to, 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 to ask you questions. Some of them, it was, it was a lot of just love. It was just lots of love. Oh, that's um, amazing. Yeah, it is. It is amazing. Um, one, one person said, I, I don't know if this is a question uh, or a statement, but I'll, 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 throw, I'll throw it at you anyway. Go ahead. How does she keep being so sexy? What? Me? <laughs> Little old me? No. <laughs> me me what do you mean i guess i just learned to accept my ugly <laughs> and just love it for what it is you know and i guess that must exude sexy you know that is that is a great it, embrace your ugly that is i i love that <laughs> As a woman, you know, we all have, as women, all women have insecurities. Like, oh, I want to do this and, you know, nip and tuck, maybe fix my ears, maybe fix my arms, maybe fix my legs. But I learned that, you know, we're all born different and it's okay to be different and we're not going to be perfect. So that can never be achieved, perfection. So I guess, you know, just learn to embrace what you have and who you are and just love it for what it is. <laughs> love it or hate it, you're going to live with it forever, so. That's such a positive message. I think that's that's so great. And I think that confidence can be seen because obviously, you know, your Instagram, there are, there are a couple thirst traps on there. There are a couple thirst traps. I see no. you. I see you. It sells, man. It works. It. Hey, I'm not complaining. I'm not saying for one second, don't, I mean, we're, no. we're all human. We can all appreciate the finer form. Um, but I think you're right. In terms of embracing your your you as a person, that does exude regardless of, whatever kind of imaginary flaws anyone paints in their own head, if you've just got the confidence to just put it out there and say, this is me, it is sexy. It is something you have to build over the years. I didn't just wake up confident. They're like, especially when I won Top Fest, it's one of the big major award shows that we had back in the day. It was like the Grammys of Albania, right? So I won and I won against singers because it was a competition. Um, humbly speaking, I won against singers that I grew up listening to like 30 years and up. Like they've been in a, my parents listened to everybody. Right. But it was great. It was a great feeling. You know, I, 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 and everybody, all of them supported me and, you know, helped me like shared my music and respected me as a new up and coming artist, which was great. But like the next day, instead of the news being about how I won and how it was a major achievement, all of the portals, all of the medias started writing about, and I was a teenager, about how fat, how overweight I am. So they said, oh, uh, young and rising star, uh, obese young and rising star. So that was something, as a teenager, it really damaged me emotionally. So I wasn't born confident. You know, I had to learn to work on myself for myself and embrace my flaws and just build my confidence over the years. So now I just do whatever I feel like doing. But that that time, I remember I locked myself in the room for like 20 days. I did not want to get up. I was crying. I was obnoxious. You know, my mom, my parents were trying to handle me because I was losing my mind. I was like, oh my God, they're not appreciating the fact that I, I was over here singing my heart out. And I won an award, a big major award, the, the number one, you know? and they talking about my weight, like how, how is this professional? I couldn't understand that. But yeah. I also, that also taught me a big lesson that when you're a public person, you know, people are going to make comments of all kinds, whether they're nice, good, whatever. You don't pay attention to the negative. 
you work on yourself and you always try to be better. So honestly, now whatever people troll or whatever they say on social media or blogs or stuff like that, it really doesn't do nothing for me emotionally. That was a big break on my head. It hit me. You can't damage me anymore. Now it's just, hey, enjoy. Watch it if you don't like it. Don't like it. It's okay, you know. Yeah. I, and to be honest, you scream positivity. You've got, you've got such Thank a great you. positive aura. And I, I think that that can be seen, but I think it's, it's as, as devastating to hear as that is, I think there's a, there's a potentially something for, for people watching this who may be a little bit overweight or, or may have insecurities about whatever it is. Right. Um, I think it's, it's almost nice for them to know that someone someone who's traditionally sexy as you are for, for someone who's getting comments like that how does she stay so sexy the the fact that you've <laughs> gone through that as well is 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 probably quite nice for people to hear you know yeah man like it not everybody's going to like you not everybody's going to appreciate you and that's okay because you're not supposed to be for everybody there are people yeah. who's going to love you regardless of what weight you look, you know, just yeah. love yourself first, because how are you going to expect the world to love you if you don't learn to accept and love yourself? Exactly. Well, let's, let's, let's fo- focus more on your voice. Let's um, do it. <laughs> because it is such a, such a beautiful voice and, and, Thank you know, your you. music is, is fantastic. We had another question from a fan um, that said, you know, what was the best performance of your career so far? Eurovision world, Ukraine. The funniest part about that, because I have stories for everything, okay? <laughs> you don't want to keep me here forever. <laughs> no, it was crazy because, like, two hours before that, I had a huge congestion on my chest. And I was like, yeah, because we were singing for two weeks straight, rehearsals, two, three times a day. like, And I had this long note that I had to hold, like, 19, 20 seconds in one breath. And imagine doing that for two weeks straight in rehearsals. My chest was done. I was like, I cannot sing anymore. And I started crying. I started praying. I started, God, I need a miracle. Like, I need to sing. Because if, if I'm going to fail at this last moment, because there was times when I could not, um, when I could not deliver that note during the rehearsals. Because, you know, I was either sick or I was tired from the night before performance. We had shows all over. So that was the best performance. I don't know. A miracle, I guess, happened. It was God. Because they had to take, my, my, my team had to find me some medicine last minute and give me something to, to help me with the congestion. And that worked. I don't know what worked, but something really, really crazy worked. Because when I got on stage, I just remember I unleashed the beast. And I don't remember nothing that happened until I got off the stage. And when I watched the performance, I was very happy with how it sounded. So thank you, God. <laughs> That's great. I, I think it's all too often, whatever, whatever it is you do, like we can be our harshest critic, you know, sometimes like I know I am particularly if I, if I watch myself or hear myself or anything like that. So the fact that you've come away from that, even with the chest problems that you thought you'd had to be able to say that performance, I absolutely smashed it. And to an audience like Eurovision as well. I mean, the numbers purely, the, that is that's incredible. The world was watching and I was like, if I don't do this performance, right, this is the moment that I waited for all my life. And if I fail on this one, I shouldn't even be on stage anymore. I can't do it. You know, I was telling myself all kinds of crazy things in my head. And suddenly for the first time in my life, I was happy with my performance because I'm never happy with how I see on stage. I always want to do better, you know, always want to fix this note, fix this line, fix this, that, you know, so. No, that's amazing. So what's what's there for the future? We've talked about your successes of the past, but what, what's coming up? What's, what's on the horizon for Lindita? Well, I'm working on new music. I am back harder than ever. Not that I took a time off, but I did kind of relax and got too comfortable for a year or two. Because, you know, I, I have a young toddler. She just turned three a few days ago. And I wanted to focus on her 100%. And I was still going to studio sessions and stuff, but it was not as dedicated as I would normally be because I wanted to make sure that I'm always there for her. But now that she's a little older, she started daycare. I'm back harder than ever. Mama is free, honey. (laughs) (laughs) We're ready to take over, you know? So hopefully that works. Hopefully everything works great and I can bring some new music. I love that. I'm so excited. I'm excited to see this new free and unleashed mama. 
unleashed mama going crazy. <laughs> oh, let me stop. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm, put, I'm, I'm encouraging the worst parts of you here and I love it. I'm just trying to, trying to get more of it. You got this. <laughs> we got it, baby. <laughs> Well, I'm super excited. I'm sure I'm sure your fan base is too. And and not just your your kind of loyal fans, but also the new ones that you're going to be collecting, you know, daily from from all of the exciting things that you're doing. So we're all very excited for the future of Lindita and, and Eurovision. When you look back at that, you're going to be like, that performance was nothing because, you know, give it a year, two years, three years, you're going to be like, this was the best performance. This was the best. This was the best performance. I hope so. Thank you so much. I hope God is listening to all of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure and uh, and I'm so glad to have uh, to met you and been able to catch up with you because you've had such an interesting career um, and it's only going to get more and more interesting. Amen. Thank you so much. Make sure you guys don't forget to stream our newest, latest single, GMFU. It's on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, iTunes. And I'm also on Instagram, Lindita World and TikTok, Lindita Planet. Twitter and all that good stuff. Just search Lindita. You'll find me everywhere because, you know, I'm like the roaches everywhere. <laughs> I love you, stuff. So you're much more, you're much more lovely than a roach, but I, I, I like the, the sentiment. <laughs> Thank you. I'm everywhere. <laughs> Thank you so much for the love. Thank you so much for the interview. And it was a great pleasure being here.